in this class we are going to discuss about ll of one parser so ll of one parser ll of one parser can also be called as predictive parser predictive parser and this can also be called as non recursive non recursive decent parser so ll of one parser or predictive parser or recursive decent parser uh, in uh, ll of one parser the first l specifies we are scanning the input string from left to right whereas the second l specifies we are using left to most derivation next this one specifies at a time we will read only one input symbol so that is the abbreviation for ll of one so the first l specifies we are scanning the input from left to right second l specifies left to most derivation is used whereas one specifies at a time we have to read only one input symbol from the input okay uh, now let's see the block diagram of ll of one parser so this block diagram uh, can be called as model so model of ll of one parser so model is nothing but block diagram here we have to write a program for uh, predictive parser so this one is nothing but predictive parser predictive parser program predictive parser program uses input so this one is nothing but input and also it uses a stack data structure it produces some output as well as it will uses a parse table so predictive parser program interacts with input so this one is nothing but input input buffer so this one is nothing but input buffer so input buffer contains some cells so this one is nothing but a stack a stack this one is nothing but a parsing table a parsing table next it produces some output in the form of some output buffer so predictive parser program uses input buffer stack and parsing table to produce some output so let's see what is input buffer here input buffer stores the input string that is to be parsed so which string we are parsing so that string will be stored in input buffer we know that the major advantage of uh, parser is it accepts the tokens input from the lexical analyzer and it produces a parse tree okay so the corresponding tokens or input will be stored in input buffer here let the input is a plus b so a will be stored in the first cell next plus will be stored next b will be stored here uh, the last cell of the input buffer is dollar so initially dollar will be stored in the input buffer and after that we have to store the corresponding input string so this is the use of input buffer okay uh, we know what is a stack stack is a data structure uh, which works on the principle of lifo last in first out we can perform two operations on the stack first one is push operation and the second one is pop operation so push means inserting an item into the stack pop means deleting an item from the stack initially dollar will be stored in the stack so the bottom of the stack contains a dollar symbol then after that the starting symbol of the grammar is pushed onto the stack let the starting symbol is yes so yes is pushed onto the stack let's see what is the use of a stack 
here stack contains the grammar symbols it may be either non terminals or terminals so the corresponding grammar symbols will be stored in the stack okay and what is the next one parsing table here parsing table is a two dimensional array two dimensional array means array contains two subscripts array contains two subscripts the first subscript will specify row size the second subscript will specify column size here 5 3 so 5 represents number of rows 3 represents number of columns here the parsing table is represented with the help of m m of capital a comma small a so this capital a is nothing but row size small a is nothing but column size generally capital a represents that is nothing but rows represents non terminals so rows are represented with non terminals whereas small a represents terminal symbols so terminals are nothing but uh, some lower case uh, alphabets left parenthesis right parenthesis some symbols so here what is capital a rows so rows are nothing but non terminals whereas small a means terminal symbols okay then after that the predictive parser program uses the stack input buffer and parsing table and it produces some output that output will be stored in the output buffer so output buffer stores the actions which are performed by the user okay uh, so this is the model or block diagram of a ll of one parser now let's see how to construct ll of one parser how we are going to construct ll of one parser so construction of ll of one parser construction of ll of one parser so what what are the other names for ll of one parser ll of one parser can also be called as predictive parser or non recursive descent parser also so non recursive means here the recursive function calls are not used okay here we can construct ll of one parser or predictive parser or non recursive descent parser with the help of five steps the first step is elimination of left recursion elimination of left recursion so if the grammar contains any left recursion then we have to eliminate that left recursion and the second step is elimination of left to factoring elimination of left to factoring so if the grammar contains any productions which contains left to factoring then we have to eliminate those left to factoring productions and the third one is calculation of first and follow calculation of first and follow and the fourth one is construction of parsing table construction of parsing table and the last one is check whether input string check whether input string is accepted by parser or not accepted by parser or not so what is the first step elimination of left recursion second one elimination of left factoring third one calculation of first and follow so in order to construct ll of one parser we must know these three topics okay and what is the fourth one construction of parsing table fifth one check whether the input string is access accepted by the corresponding parser or not so already we have seen left recursion left factoring first and follow in the previous videos uh, now let's see the fourth step so what is the fourth step construction of parsing table okay so already we know how to eliminate left recursion left factoring as well as how to calculate first and follow Uh, so in order to solve this problem we must have the complete knowledge on elimination of left recursion elimination of left factoring calculation of first and follow so if you don't have much knowledge on these topics please refer my previous videos left recursion elimination left factoring elimination first and follow all those topics are explained with uh, some several examples so please refer okay so now let's see how to construct a parse table 
so construction of pass table let the production is represented in the form of a implies alpha here a means non terminal alpha means a combination of uh, terminals and non terminals or some epsilon any production and, and here the first step is if the production is in the form of a implies alpha then we have to calculate first of alpha so this is nothing but alpha so we need to calculate first of alpha we know that first or follow will produce some terminal symbols let first of alpha produces a terminal symbol called a then we have to add what is the production here a implies alpha 2 we have to add this production in parsing table that parsing table is represented with the help of m so m of here what is the non terminal here capital a is the non terminal and what is the terminal symbol here small a is the terminal symbol so this is the first step if the production is in the form of a implies alpha then we have to calculate first of alpha it produces some terminal symbols let it is producing a terminal symbol called a then we have to add this production to m of a means this row row, row value whereas this small a means scalar value and the second rule is if first of alpha produces epsilon if first of alpha contains epsilon or if a implies epsilon is the production if first of alpha contains epsilon or if a implies epsilon is the production then we have to calculate follow of a if a implies epsilon is the production then we have to calculate follow of a why because we can't calculate here first because first of epsilon means it produces epsilon only so we have to calculate first of follow of a okay it also produces some terminal symbols let it is producing a terminal symbol called b then we have to add the production a implies epsilon to m of here what is the non terminal a terminal symbol b so this is the second step here if first of alpha contains epsilon or if a implies epsilon is the production then we have to calculate follow of the this non terminal follow of a it produces some terminals let it is producing a terminal symbol called b so then what we have to do we have to add this production to m of non terminal is capital a terminal symbol is b and the third step is the remaining entries of the parsing table are filled with errors so what will happen now the remaining entries of the parsing table are filled with errors errors so we have to write a message called error in the remaining entries so in this way we can construct the parsing table and after constructing the parsing table we have to check whether a string is accepted by this parser or not now let us take an example with the help of an example we will try to discuss in detail let here the grammar is uh, so this is the standard question so a implies a implies e plus t r t so this is the first production second production t implies t star f r f third production f implies left parenthesis e right parenthesis i so we have to construct ll of one parser or predictive parser or non recursive descent parser for this grammar so what is step one elimination of left recursion step 2 elimination of left factoring step 3 calculation of first and follow step 4 construction of parsing table step 5 we have to check whether the input string is accepted by the parser or not so let's see the first step so step 1 here is elimination of left recursion elimination of left recursion So here what is the first production? Uh, let's see what is left recursion. 
If the projection is in the form of A implies A alpha or beta, then it is called as left recursion. If the grammar contains left recursion, then we have to replace this projection. So replace with A implies A. So here what is the projection? A implies A alpha or beta is the projection. So A implies beta A dash, where A dash implies alpha A dash or epsilon. So if the projection is in this form, then we have to replace this projection with these two projections. So let us consider the first projection. E implies E plus T or T. So here E means A. So E means A. So this plus T is nothing but this alpha. And this T is nothing but beta. So we have to replace this projection with these two projections. So what is the first projection? A implies beta A dash. Here A means E. So E implies beta means T. So T. A dash. A dash means E dash. So E implies T E dash. And what is the next projection? A dash. Here A dash means E dash. So E dash implies alpha. Alpha means plus T. A dash means E dash or epsilon. So after removing the left recursion for this projection, these two are the newly generated projections. Now let us consider the second projection. Okay. So what is the second projection? T implies T star F or F. So T means A. Star F means alpha. F means beta. So we have to replace this projection with A implies beta A dash. Here A means T. So T implies beta means F. A dash means T dash. Where T dash implies alpha A dash. Alpha means star F. A dash means T dash or epsilon. So we have to replace this projection with these two projections. And what is the last one? F implies E R I D. Here there is no left recursion. Because left recursion means. So what is left recursion? The left hand side non-terminal should be same as. So what is this one? The leftmost symbol of the right hand side projection. If these two are same. Here these two are same. These two are same. So that's why we can say that the, the grammar contains some left recursion. Whereas here these two are not same. Here the leftmost symbol is uh, T. Whereas here the leftmost symbol on the RHS is left parenthesis. So these two are not same. So we can say that there is no, le no left recursion. So after removing the left recursion. After eliminating left recursion. So what is the grammar? The grammar is. So what is the first production? These two productions. E implies T E dash. Second production. E dash implies plus T E dash R epsilon. Next to two productions. T implies F T dash. Next one. T dash implies star F T dash R epsilon. So what is the last production? This production. So F implies left parenthesis E R I. So step one is over. So what is step one? Elimination of left recursion. So now let's see step two. So now let's see step two. So what is step two? Elimination of left factory. Elimination of left factory. We can say that a grammar contains left factory if the projections are in the form of A implies alpha beta 1 or alpha beta 2 or gamma 1 or gamma 2. Here alpha means the common term. Among all the productions here, beta 1, this production, and this production. So, if the production is in the form of like this, then we can say that the grammar contains left factory. So, we have to replace this, these productions with, so replaces with A implies alpha A dash or gamma 1 or gamma 2, where A dash implies beta 1 or beta 2. 
okay now let us consider the first production so what is the first production e implies t e dash so here we have only one production but in order to eliminate the left factoring so we should have more than one production and there should be some common factor some common term so here we have only one production so here also here we have two productions but there is no common term here okay but in order to eliminate the left factoring there should be some common factor between the corresponding productions here also we have only one term here also we have two terms two productions but there is uh, no common term here okay so f implies e and i so here also there is uh, no common term so we can say that the grammar doesn't contains any left factor so there is no left factor okay so with this step 1 is over step 2 is over next step 3 so what is step 3 calculation of first and follow calculation of first and follow so let us calculate first and follow so here what is the first production so e implies p e dash is the first production second one e dash implies plus p e dash or epsilon is the second production so third one t implies f t dash fourth one t dash implies star f t dash or epsilon so last one f implies e r i so now let us start the calculation of first and follow so let's see how to calculate the first so already we know how to calculate first and follow so first one first of e first of e is equal to so first of e means first of t first of t means first of f so first of f means left parenthesis comma i so left parenthesis comma i so next one first of e dash so first of e dash is equal to so first of e dash means in this production what is the first symbol plus in this production epsilon so first of e dash means plus comma epsilon now let us consider the next production so what is the next one so first of t so first of t is equal to first of t is equal to first of f first of f is equal to left parenthesis comma i so left parenthesis comma i next one first of t dash is equal to so what is first of t dash in this production it is starting with star this production epsilon so first of t dash means star comma epsilon next let us calculate first of left parenthesis first of what is the last non terminal f so first of f is equal to left parenthesis i left parenthesis i okay now we have to calculate follow so follow of e is equal to follow of e is equal to so what is follow of e here e is nothing but starting symbol so for the for for, for the starting symbol we have to add dollar here so so now let us calculate follow of e in order to calculate follow of e we have to search as for the right hand side productions which contains e here here we have only one production here uh, this right parenthesis is followed by e so follow of e is nothing but right parenthesis so dollar comma right parenthesis next let us calculate follow of e dash so follow of e dash is nothing but here there is no symbol which is following e dash so follow of e dash is nothing but follow of e so what is follow of e dollar comma right parenthesis dollar comma right parenthesis and after that so this is the result uh, and we have one more production so e dash implies plus t e dash so here also there is uh, no symbol which is following e dash so follow of e dash is nothing but follow of e dash so th that is the same result only uh, now let us calculate the next one so e is over e dash is over so follow of t so follow of t is equal to so follow so what is follow of t here here t is for e dash is followed by t here so follow of t will become 
first of e dash. So what is first of e dash? First of e dash means plus or epsilon. So plus comma epsilon. But we should not write epsilon here. Why? Because epsilon is not allowed in for loop. So epsilon is substituted here. So in place of e dash, we have to substitute epsilon. We substitute epsilon there, then it will become t into epsilon. So t into epsilon means t. So then for of t will become for of e. So what is for of e? Dollar comma right parenthesis. Next one, follow of t dash. So follow of t dash is nothing but so where t dash is there in the third production we have t dash, but there is no symbol is following t dash. So follow of t dash will become follow of t. So what is follow of t? Plus dollar and right parenthesis. Okay. Here also we have t dash, but after t dash there is no symbol. So follow of t dash will become follow of t dash only. So next one, follow of F. Follow of F. Okay. So follow of F is nothing but. So here what will happen? T dash is followed by F. So F follow of F. F will become first of T dash because T dash is followed by F here. So follow of F will become first of T dash. So what is first of T dash? This projection. So star comma epsilon, but we should not write epsilon here. So we have to substitute epsilon in place of t dash in this production. If we substitute epsilon here, then it will become f into epsilon. So f into epsilon means f. So then power of f will become there is no symbol after f. So power of f will become power of t. So what is power of t plus dollar right parenthesis. So in this way we can calculate. Uh, First and follow. So now let's see the next step. So what is the next step? Construction of predictive parsing table. Construction of parsing table. So step 3 is over. So step 4. Construction of parsing table. Construction of parsing table. So in parsing table, these non-terminals are nothing but rows. So what are the non-terminals here? E. Next one e dash t t dash f. So these are nothing but rows. E e dash t t dash f. Next step. columns are nothing but terminal symbols. So what are the terminal symbols here? The first terminal symbol is plus plus. Next one is star. Next one is left parenthesis, right parenthesis. Next one I. So left parenthesis, right parenthesis, I. D. And we also include dollar here because dollar specifies the end of the string. Okay. But there is no need to use epsilon here. So now we have to fill this table. So in order to fill this table, we have to follow three rules. So all the three rules are already discussed here. So let us consider the first production. So what is the first production here? E implies T E dash. So this is nothing but A. This is nothing but alpha. So if the production is in the form of A implies alpha, then we have to calculate first of alpha. Here alpha means first of T E dash. So first of T E dash means first of T. So what is first of T? Left parenthesis comma i. So left parenthesis comma i. So now we have to add. So add a implies t dash to m of. So m is nothing but this passing table. So this one is nothing but row size. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 is nothing but row size. So column size 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 is nothing but column size. So m of. So here what is the non terminal? A. A means what? E. So M of E comma. Terminal symbol. First one left parenthesis. Second one M of non terminal E is E. And what is the terminal symbol? I D is the terminal symbol. So here what is the prediction? E implies T E dash. It should be added to E left parenthesis. So this is nothing but E. This is nothing but left parenthesis. So in this cell we have to add that prediction. So what is the first production here? 
E implies T E dash is the production. And E ID. So this is E, this is ID. So we have to add the production E implies T E dash. So first production is rho 1. Now let us consider the second production. So what is the second production? E implies Sorry. So in the second production we have uh, two productions here. This is the first one. This is the second one. So let us consider the first one. 2A. So 2A E dash implies plus T E dash. E dash implies plus T E dash. So E dash means A. So plus T E dash means alpha. So we have to calculate. So first half alpha. So alpha means first half plus T E dash. So first half plus T E dash means what is the first symbol here? Plus. So you add. What is the production here? E dash implies plus T E dash to M of. What is that non-terminal? E dash comma terminal plus. So what is E dash? This is E dash. This one is nothing but plus. So we have to add the production here. E dash implies plus T E dash. Now let us consider the second production. 2B. E dash implies E. If the production contains epsilon, then we have to calculate fall of the non-terminal. So this one is nothing but A, this one is nothing but alpha. So we have to calculate fall of E dash. So what is fall of E dash? Dollar right parenthesis. Dollar right parenthesis. So fall of E dash means dollar right parenthesis. So you add, so what is the production here? E dash implies epsilon 2. M of Non-terminal is E dash. What is the first terminal? Dollar. And what is the second subscript? M of E dash comma right parenthesis. So this one is nothing but E dash. Dollar is nothing but this cell. So in this cell, we have to add E dash implies epsilon. Next, this is nothing but E dash. And this is nothing but right parenthesis in this cell. So in this cell we have to write E dash implies epsilon. So second production is rho 1. Now let us consider the third production. So what is the third one here? F implies T implies F T dash. So T means A, F T dash means alpha. So we have to calculate first half alpha. So first half F T dash. So first half F T dash means first half F. So first half F means left parenthesis comma I. Left parenthesis comma I. So add. What is the production here? Add. T implies F T dash 2. M of. Here the non terminal is T. What is the first terminal symbol? Left parenthesis. Next one M of T comma second terminal symbol I. Okay. So this is T. And this one is nothing but left parenthesis. This is the cell here. So what is the production we have here? So T implies F T dash. Okay. Next production T ID. So this is T. This is ID. So what is the production? T implies F T dash. F T dash. So third production is also over. So now let us consider the fourth one. In the fourth production we have two productions. So star F T dash and epsilon. So let us consider the first one. What is the first one? T dash implies star F T dash. So this is A, this is alpha. So calculate follow of star F T dash. So follow of star F T dash is nothing but star. So you add T dash implies star F T dash to M of so what is the non-terminal here? T dash comma terminal symbol star. T dash comma star. So this is T dash and this is star. So which production we have to add? T dash implies star F T dash. Now let us consider the second one. 4B. T dash implies epsilon. If the production contains epsilon, then we have to calculate follow of the non-terminal. So here fall of T dash is nothing but. So what is fall of T dash? Plus dollar right parenthesis. 
okay so totally we need to add three productions what is the first one t dash plus t dash plus this set next one t dash dollar so this set next one t dash right parenthesis this set what is the production here t dash implies epsilon t dash implies epsilon t dash implies epsilon let us consider the last one so what is the last one f implies e r i d f implies e r i d so here we have uh, two productions 1 2 3 4 5 what is the first one f implies left parenthesis e right parenthesis so this is a this is alpha so calculate first so first half left parenthesis e this is nothing but left parenthesis so we have to add this projection to m of f left parenthesis so this is f this is left parenthesis so what is the projection here f implies left parenthesis e right parenthesis let us consider the last one f implies id so f implies id means first half id because this is alpha so first half id means id first half id means id so this is f and this is id what is the projection f implies id so in this way we can calculate we can construct parsing table so what is the last step we have to check whether the string is accepted by the parser or not so now let's see that one. so last step we have to check whether the input string is accepted by the parser or not so step 5 here uh, let us consider that the input string is id plus id we know that here uh, the starting symbol that is the ending symbol here is dollar so initially we have to place dollar in the string next to place the corresponding input string id plus id so here we have three columns the first column specifies stack second column specifies input string next third column specifies the action uh, initially dollar is pushed onto the stack so the bottom of the stack contains dollar and then the starting symbol is pushed onto the stack here the starting symbol is e so dollar is the bottom symbol of the stack so what is the top symbol of the stack e next initially we have to place dollar at the end of the string here the input string is id plus id so the top of the stack is e and uh, the first input symbol is id so non terminal is e terminal is id so e id so which production we have to apply e implies t e dash t e dash so we have to replace e with the reverse of e dash t because here the stack works on the principle of before last in first out so here what we have in is in the reverse order we have to perform the push operation so dollar so in the reverse order what is the production here t e dash is reversed so e dash t okay next what is the input string here id plus id dollar so top of the stack is t and the input is at id so t id so t id which production we have to apply t implies ft dash t implies ft dash so dollar e dash so we have to replace t with the reverse of ft t dash so the reverse of ft t dash is t dash f next id id plus id dollar so input is at id so now the top of the stack is f terminal symbol is id so f id so here the production is f implies id so we have to replace f with id so dollar e dash t dash id next id plus id dollar so top of the stack is id and the input is at id here if top of the stack and the input symbol are same then we have to perform pop operation on the stack here the stack's top most symbol contains id whereas the input symbol is id so both are same so perform pop operation on the stack so after performing the pop operation this id will be deleted so dollar e dash t dash 
So we have to delete this ID now. As well as, so this uh, whenever we perform the pop operation, then uh, we move the pointer one position to the right. So now the pointer is at plus location. So plus ID data. So the operation on the ID, this ID is over. So move the pointer one position to the right. Okay. So now the top of the stack is T dash and uh, the pointer, this input is at plus. So T dash plus. So T dash plus means T dash implies epsilon. That is the function here. So in place of T dash, we have to substitute epsilon. Okay, then E dash into epsilon. So E dash into epsilon means E dash. So dollar E dash. Next to plus ID dollar. So now what is the top of the stack? E dash. Input is at plus. So E dash plus. E dash plus. So what is the production? E dash implies plus T E dash. So we have to replace E dash with the reverse of plus T E dash. So that is nothing but E dash T plus. So top of the stack is plus. Next to plus ID dollar. So input is a plus. So now the top of the stack is plus as well as input symbol is plus. So both are same. So pop the stack and move the pointer one position to the right. Okay. So pop the stack. And move the pointer one position to the right. So now there is no, no need of plus. So dollar e dash t. So we have to perform pop operation. So plus will be deleted. Now move the pointer one position to the right. So now input string is let us assume that it is some id dash. id dollar. Okay. So now top of the stack is t. And the terminal symbol is id. So t id. So here the production is t implies f t dash. t implies f t dash. So dollar e dash. So t is replaced with the reverse of f t t dash. So that is nothing but t dash f. Next id dollar. So input is at id. So top of the stack is f. f id. So here the production is f implies id. So f implies id. So replace this f with id. So dollar e dash t dash id. So id dollar. Input is at id. And the top of the stack is id. So the top of the stack as well as input symbol both are same. So we have to perform the pop operation. So whenever we perform the pop operation, then id will be deleted. And as well as we have to move the pointer one position to the right. So after deleting the id, the stack is dollar e dash t dash. Top of the stack is t dash. Now move the pointer one position to the right. So now there is no need of id. So now this uh, pointer is at right, dollar position. Okay. Next, t dash dollar, t dash dollar. So the production is t dash implies epsilon. So we have to replace t dash with epsilon. So dollar, so e dash into, so replace t dash with epsilon. So e dash into epsilon is nothing but e dash. So dollar. So e dash dollar, e dash dollar. So what is the production? e dash implies epsilon. So replace e dash with epsilon. So then dollar epsilon. So dollar epsilon is nothing but dollar. Here also dollar. Here after passing the entire input string, if the stack contains only dollar symbol, then we can say that our string is accepted by the parser. So the parser produces the corresponding parse string. Okay. So here after performing the entire string, the stack contains only dollar. So we can say that the string is accepted by the corresponding parser. So now what will happen? The parser will generate parse string. So we have to construct parse string based upon the productions. So what is the first production here? So here the first production is E implies T E dash. So E T E dash. Next to second production, T implies F T dash. So T, F, T dash. Third production, F implies ID. Next one, pop operation, not needed. Right? Next one, T dash implies epsilon. Next one, E dash implies plus T, E dash. Next to pop operation, no need to represent. T implies F T dash. F T dash. Next one, F implies ID. 
I next one pop operation no need to represent next one t dash implies epsilon next one e dash implies epsilon next one so here what is the yield of the tree so id so this one this one okay so this one so id epsilon next plus next one id next one epsilon next one epsilon okay so id into epsilon is nothing but id so plus id into epsilon into epsilon is nothing but id so in this way we can construct the the parsing table as well as the parse tree for the ll of one uh, now let's see some examples on uh, ll of one parser or predictive parser or uh, non recursive descent parser uh, here the problem is uh, construct predictive parser for the following grammar s implies within the parenthesis uh, left parenthesis l right parenthesis r a L implies L comma S or S. Uh, in order to construct uh, predictive parser or LL of one parser, we have to follow five steps. Step one is elimination of left left recursion. Step two is elimination of left factoring. Step three calculation of first and follow. Step four construction of uh, parsing table. Step five check whether the input string is accepted by the corresponding parser or not. So now let's see the first step. Step one. Step one is elimination of left recursion. Elimination of left recursion. So we can say that a grammar contains left recursion. If the predictions are in the form uh, a implies a alpha or beta, then it is replaced with a implies beta a dash, where a dash implies alpha a dash or epsilon. Let us consider the first prediction. Yes, implies left parenthesis L, right parenthesis R A. Here, uh, these two must be same. The left hand side non terminal as well as the leftmost symbol of the right hand side non terminal. Both should be same only. Whereas here, yes, is the symbol here. Here, left parenthesis. So we can say that here there is uh, no left recursion for this prediction. Now let us consider the second prediction. L implies L comma Yes, comma, yes. So here this prediction is in the form of A implies A alpha or beta. So L is nothing but A. Comma S yes is nothing but alpha. S yes is nothing but beta. So we have to replace this prediction with replace with A implies beta A dash. Here A means L. Beta means yes. A dash means L dash. Where A dash implies A dash means L dash. Implies Alpha A dash. Alpha means comma S. Yes. Next A dash means L dash or epsilon. Okay. Let us write the projections after eliminating left recursion. After eliminating left recursion, the grammar is grammar is. So what is the first projection? Yes implies left parenthesis L, right parenthesis A. Next to two projections, these two projections. L implies S L dash. Next one, L dash implies comma S L dash or epsilon. So here the second step is elimination of left factoring. So step two, elimination of left factoring. So left factoring means uh, there is a common term in the available productions. If you take the first production, here we have left parenthesis, here we have A. So there is no common term. If you take the second one, we have only one production. So there is no common term because there is no second production. If you take the third one, we have two productions. But here the first symbol is comma, here the first symbol is epsilon. So we can say that here there is no common term. So we can say that there is no left factory. So no left factory. So we can keep the productions as it is. Now step 3. So here the step 3 is calculate first and follow. So we have to calculate first and follow of the corresponding non terminals. So let us calculate first. So first of yes. First of yes is equal to. So here we have left parenthesis and here we have a. Okay. Left parenthesis comma a. Next, let us calculate 
first of n so what is first of n first of s so what is first of s it is already calculated left parenthesis comma a next one first of n dash so what is first of n dash here the initial symbol is comma here the initial symbol is epsilon so comma comma epsilon so comma is the first one epsilon is the second one now let us calculate follow follow of s is equal to so we have to set the right hand side productions which contains capital s here after s we have l dash so follow of s will become first of l dash because l dash is followed by s so first of l dash so what is first of l dash comma comma epsilon but we should not write epsilon here why because epsilon is uh, not allowed in follow so we have to substitute epsilon here so if we substitute epsilon in place of l dash then the production will become s into epsilon yes so here there is no symbol after the s so follow of s will become follow of l follow of l so what is follow of l it is not calculated so first we have to calculate follow of l follow of l let us calculate follow of l here after l we have right parenthesis is there is any right hand side production which contains l no so follow of l means right parenthesis Whereas now we have to substitute dollar right parenthesis why because follow of yes means what is follow of yes first of n dash because n dash is followed by yes so first of n dash means comma 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 next we have epsilon here so we need to substitute epsilon in place of n dash so s yes into epsilon means yes so follow of yes will become follow of n what is follow of n right parenthesis next. Here S is the starting symbol, so we have to write dollar here. So for the starting symbol, we have to write dollar in the corresponding follow production. So comma, right parenthesis and dollar. Now let us calculate follow of L dash. Here there is no symbol after L dash, so follow of L dash will become follow of L. So what is follow of L? Right parenthesis. Okay. Here also we have L dash, so follow of L dash will become follow of L dash. So that is the corresponding production here. So in this way we can calculate first and follow. Now let's see. Now let's see the fourth step. Here the fourth step is construction of passing table. Construction of passing table. So we have to construct the passing table now. So step four. construction of passing table here after eliminating the left recursion and left factoring so what are the productions here here the productions are uh, what is the first production here s yes implies left parenthesis l r a second production l implies s l dash next production L dash implies comma s yes, L dash R epsilon. Okay. Now let us calculate. Let us construct the passing table. Here uh, the rows are represented with non-terminals. Here the non-terminals are s, yes, L and L dash are the non-terminals. So s, yes, L, L dash are the non-terminals. Now let us write the terminal symbols. Terminals are nothing but these columns. So left parenthesis, right parenthesis. A and I D dollar. So left parenthesis, next one right parenthesis, and what is the next input symbol? A. Next one. We don't have any other in. Uh, yeah, we have comma also. So left parenthesis, right parenthesis, A, A comma, <coughs> and the last one is dollar symbol. So now let us uh, fill this table with the appropriate values. Here in the first production we have uh, two productions. So one a s implies left parenthesis l right parenthesis r a. So this is a, this is alpha. So this is the first production. So we have to calculate first of alpha. So first of left parenthesis l right parenthesis. So here the result is left parenthesis. So we have to add. We have to add s of s implies left parenthesis l right parenthesis two. So which production? 
m of m is nothing but pass table so what is the non terminal here yes it is producing the terminal symbol left parenthesis so m of yes left parenthesis so this is l this is left parenthesis so we have to add the production here yes implies left parenthesis l right parenthesis now let us consider the second one yes implies a so this is a this is alpha so we have to calculate follow of a so follow of a means a so add the production s yes implies a to a of non terminal is yes what is the terminal symbol a so this is yes this is a what is the production here s yes implies a is the production here okay so the first production is over now let us take the second production so what is the second production there L implies S L dash. L implies S L dash. So we have to calculate first of this production. So first of S L dash. So first of S L dash means first of S. So what is first of S? Left parenthesis comma Y. So L L implies S L dash to M of M means passing table. What is the non terminal here? L. First terminal left parenthesis. Second terminal M of L comma Y. So this is L. This is left parenthesis. L left parenthesis. What is the production here? L implies S L dash. So this is L and this is Y. This L. So what is the production here? L implies S L dash. So second production is also over. Now let us consider the second third one. In the third one we have uh, two productions. So first one three A. L dash implies comma S L dash. So this is here. This is alpha. So we have to calculate follow of. I'm sorry. First of comma S L dash. So that is nothing but comma. So we have to add L dash implies comma S L dash to L dash comma. So this is L dash and this is comma. So what is the production? L dash implies comma S L dash. Comma S L dash. Let us consider 3B. So what is 3B? L dash implies epsilon. If the production contains epsilon, then we have to calculate follow. So follow of L dash. So here follow of L dash means right parenthesis. So this is L dash, and this is right parenthesis. So what is the production we have to add? L dash implies epsilon. So in this way, we can construct the passing table, and after that check whether uh, An input string is accepted by the parser or not. Here, let us assume that the string is left parenthesis a, a right parenthesis. We can derive a number of things. Yes implies left parenthesis l right parenthesis. What is l? L is equal to yes. So what is yes? Y. So let us assume that the string is left parenthesis a right parenthesis. Initially, the input string contains dollar. So here we have three columns. The first column is stack, and the second column is input string, and the third column is action. Okay. So initially stack contains dollar symbol. So dollar specifies that the stack is empty. So initially we have to push uh, the starting symbol onto the stack. Here the starting symbol is yes. So dollar yes. Uh, initially the input string contains dollar. Here, let us assume that uh, we have taken the string left parenthesis here, right parenthesis. So here, what is the starting symbol? Yes. Here, left parenthesis. Yes, left parenthesis. Yes, left parenthesis. So here, the production is yes implies left parenthesis here, right parenthesis. So now we have to replace yes with the reverse of this production because we have to follow some top uh, top down parsing technique. So this is a stack. So right parenthesis here, left parenthesis. So reverse of this one will be pushed. Next left parenthesis here, right parenthesis dollar. Here if top of the stack as well as if input symbol are same, then we have to perform pop operation. So after performing pop, what will happen? Dollar left parenthesis here. This left parenthesis will be deleted. As well as this left parenthesis is already used. So there is no need of left parenthesis. So increment the pointer variable. So a right parenthesis dollar. Now this pointer is at a. Now the top of the stack is L, and the symbol is Y. So L Y. What is the production? L implies S L dash. So dollar right parenthesis 
So the reverse of this projection is pushed. So n dash yes. So a right parenthesis is done. So the top of the stack is yes, whereas the input symbol is a. So yes a. Yes a. So what is the projection? Yes implies a. So this a is replaced with a. So dollar right parenthesis n dash. So a right parenthesis dollar. So top of the stack is a. Input symbol is a. So both are same. So we have to perform pop operation. So what we have now? Dollar right parenthesis n dash. After performing the pop operation, a will be deleted, and there is no need of a now. So we have to implement the pointer variable. So right parenthesis dollar. So now the pointer is at right parenthesis. Top of the stack is l dash. So l dash right parenthesis. So what is the prediction? L dash implies epsilon. So now we have to replace l dash with epsilon. Right parenthesis dollar. So right parenthesis into epsilon is nothing but right parenthesis. So top of the stack is right parenthesis. And the input symbol is right parenthesis. If both are same, then perform the pop operation. So if you perform pop operation, then dollar will be deleted. This right parenthesis will be deleted. Next, now uh, an element is popped from the stack. So now there is no need of this right parenthesis. So implement the pointer variable dollar. So here the entire string is processed. This is the string here. After processing the entire string, if the stack contains only dollar symbol, then we can say that this string is accepted so we can say that this string is accepted by the parser so in this way we can construct the parsing table for the corresponding grammar now let's see one more example so now let's see this example construct a predictive parser table for the following grammar check whether the string aabb is accepted or not so this is the grammar here yes implies small a capital a capital b or small b capital a or epsilon a implies small a capital a small b or epsilon b implies small b capital b or epsilon so here the first uh, step one is uh, eliminate left recursion but here there is no left recursion left recursion means uh, uh, this uh, non terminal as well as this non terminal should be same but here these two are different so there is no left recursion and the second step is eliminate left factoring here the predictions are not in the form of left factoring left factoring means uh, there is a common term available in all the productions but here we have uh, multiple productions but there is no common term in available productions so we can say that this grammar doesn't contains any left recursion and left factoring so first we have to calculate first and follow so calculate first and follow so first of s is equal to so what is first of s uh, a b epsilon so a comma b comma epsilon next one first of a is equal to so what is first of a it is starting with a it is starting with epsilon so a comma epsilon next one first of b is equal to here also we have two productions it is starting with b and it contains epsilon so b comma epsilon so first is calculated now let us calculate follow so follow of s is equal to so for calculating follow we have to search for uh, right hand side productions which contains yes but there is uh, no production uh, available in the right hand side which contains yes so there is no need of any symbol here but for the starting symbol we have to add dollar to the follow next one follow of yes is calculated so the next one is follow of a follow of a okay so we have to calculate follow of a now uh, here we have two productions the first production is s implies b a we need to calculate follow of a but uh, there is no symbol after a so follow of a will become follow of s so what is follow of s dollar and we have one more production which contains capital a on the right hand side that is uh, a implies a a b so what is follow of a now b symbol is following so dollar comma b now let us calculate follow of b so follow of b here also we have uh, two productions so this is the first one and this is the second one so let us consider the first one s yes, implies a a b follow of b so there is no symbol which is following b so follow of b will become follow of s so dollar comma so what is the next production b implies b b so no symbol is following so follow of b means follow of b so this is nothing but follow of b so in this way we can calculate the first and follow now uh, 
let us construct the passing table so construct passing table so construction of the passing table so in order to construct the passing table we have to take non terminals uh, as the rows so what are the non terminals yes a b so yes a b next terminals are nothing but columns so what are the terminals here a b so we don't have any other symbol so the last one is dollar so a b and the last one is dollar okay so now we have to fill this table okay so let us consider the first production so what is the first production here here we have uh, three productions one a s implies a a b so we have to calculate first of uh, that uh, right hand side production so first of a a b so first of a a b means a so what we have to do is we have to add s implies a a to m of m means this passing table here the non terminal is s terminal is a yes a so this is yes this is a what is the production s implies a a b now let us consider the second one one b s implies b a so we have to calculate first of this one so first of b a so first of b a means b so we add s implies b a to m of m of what is the non terminal here s comma what is the terminal b so this is yes this is b so what is the production here s implies b a s implies b a okay next one c s implies epsilon if the production contains epsilon then we have to calculate fall so fall of s so what is fall of s it is already calculated it is done so we have to add add s implies epsilon to m of s what is the terminal it is producing dollar so yes dollar what is the production s implies epsilon so with this first production is over now let us consider the second one 2a so what is 2a a implies a a b a a b so we have to calculate first of this one so first of a a b means a so this is a and what is the terminal symbol this is terminal symbol so we add the production a implies a a b now let us consider the second one a implies epsilon so we have to calculate fall of the non terminal fall of a so what is fall of a dollar b dollar b so we have to add two productions now what is the first production a is the non terminal dollar is the terminal so a dollar what is the production here a implies epsilon next one a b a b so what is the production now a implies epsilon okay so second one is over next third one 3a so what is 3a b implies b b so we have to calculate first so first of bb means what bb so b is the non terminal this small b is the terminal so what is the production we have to add b implies bb so let us consider the last one so 3b so what is the last one b implies epsilon so we have to calculate fall of so fall of b means what b epsilon b epsilon so b b is the so we need to calculate fall of b so what is fall of b this dollar what is fall of b dollar symbol okay so b is the this non terminal dollar is this cell so what is the production we have here b in place it's not okay so with this uh, the construction of the passing table is over if there are uh, any other uh, empty columns uh, then we have to fill up with errors here okay so in this way we can construct the passing table and we have uh, Uh, one more step here what is that step we have to check whether the input string a a b b is accepted or not okay so here the input string is a a b b okay so a a b b is the input string initially at the end we need to place dollar so here we have three columns the first column is stack and the second column is input string and the third column is action So initially stack contains dollar, and after that we have to push the starting symbol under the stack. Yes, and here what is the input string? A A B B dollar. Next here the uh, top of the stack is yes. 
starting symbol is a yes a what is the production we have to apply yes implies a a b so dalak what is yes a a b b in reverse order we have to perform the push operation b a a a a b b dalak if uh, topmost symbol of the stack as well as input symbol is same then we can perform the pop operation pop so after uh, popping this stack b a because this a will be deleted now there is no need of this a here because uh, the passing of this a is over so now let us write the remaining inputs a b b now the pointer is at a location top of the stack is a a a a a so what is the production a implies a a b so in reverse order we have to perform the push operation so dollar b in reverse order b a a a b b dollar so top of the stack is a as well as input symbol is a both are same so we have to perform the pop operation so after performing the pop operation the stack will become b b a and uh, the passing of this input symbol is over so move the pointer next position so b b dollar a so a is the non terminal b is the terminal so a is the non terminal b is the terminal so a implies epsilon is the production so replace with epsilon if you replace with epsilon then it will become bb into epsilon so bb into epsilon is nothing but bb so bb dollar so top of the stack b terminal symbol b input symbol b so both are same so perform the pop operation so now it will become b b is popped so the passing of this input is over so move the pointer one position to the right so bb so what is the input here b implies bb b implies bb b now we have to replace b with the reverse of bb the reverse of bb is bb so b dollar so top of the stack is b input symbol is b so both are same so perform the pop operation so delete this one so dollar b so now the passing of this input symbol is over so move the pointer one position to the right okay now top of the stack is b input symbol is dollar so b dollar so what is the production b implies epsilon so replace with epsilon epsilon dollar so dollar into epsilon dollar dollar after passing the entire input string if the stack contains only dollar symbol then we can say that this string is accepted by the parser so we can say that this string is accepted by the parser and this is the parse table for the grammar now let's see one more example now let's see the last problem in uh, ll of one parser construct predictive parser for the following grammar s implies small i capital e small t capital s or uh, small i capital e small t capital s small e small s or a a implies b uh, so we require five steps here uh, so here the step one is uh, So what is step one? Elimination of elimination of left recursion. <coughs> But here uh, there is no left recursion. Why? Because left recursion means the left hand side non-terminal and the leftmost symbol of the right hand side production. Both should be same. But here the non-terminal is yes, whereas here it is i. Here also it is i. If you take the second production, here we have e, and here we have b. So we can say that there is no left recursion in this grammar. So no left recursion. No left recursion. Now let us consider second step. So step two. so here step 2 is elimination of elimination of left factoring we can say that a grammar contains left factoring if the productions are in the form of a implies a implies alpha beta 1 Or alpha beta two, so on gamma one or gamma two, then we can say that the grammar contains left factoring. So in this situation, we have to replace this grammar with 
two productions. So replace with. So we have to replace with. A implies alpha A dash or gamma one or gamma two, where A dash implies beta one and beta two. Beta one and beta two. So here alpha is nothing but the common term in the available productions. Uh, so if you take this example, S yes implies. I E T S I E T S E S. So here S is nothing but. So here what is the grammar here? S implies I E T S R I E T S E S R Y. So here S is nothing but this Y. And here what is the common term here? Here alpha is the common term. So here I E T S is the common term. So I E T S is nothing but alpha. Uh, so anything into epsilon is equal to that anything. So let us assume that here we have epsilon because I E T S into epsilon is nothing but I E T S. Let us assume that epsilon is nothing but beta one. So this E S is nothing but beta two. This A is nothing but some gamma. So replace this production with. So replace with. A implies alpha A dash. Here, what is A? Yes, yes implies alpha A dash. Alpha means I E T S A dash. A dash means yes dash or gamma one or gamma two. Here we have only one gamma that is A. Next, A dash implies. Here, what is A dash? Yes dash implies beta one or beta two. So beta one means epsilon. Beta two means E S. So we have to replace this grammar with these two productions. And if you take this one, E implies B. Here there is no left factory. There is no left factory because here we have only one term. But for left factory, it should have minimum two terms. Okay. So after eliminating the left factory, this is the grammar here. So totally, how many productions are there? So totally, we have three productions. So what is the first production? Yes implies I E I E T S yes dash R E. Second production yes dash implies epsilon or E S. Next third one E implies B. So step one is over. Step two is over. So step one means left recursion elimination. Step two means left factoring elimination. Now step three. Here step three means calculating first and follow. So step three, we have to calculate first and follow. So here let. So next step three. Here step three means we have to calculate first and follow. So step three, calculate first and follow. First and follow. So first let us calculate first. So first off, here what is the non-terminal gear? Yes, is the non-terminal gear. So first off, yes is equal to. Here in this production, it is starting with small i. So small i is the first. Whereas if you take the second production, here the terminal symbol is A. So what is first of yes? I comma A because the first production starts with I. Second production contains only small A. Now let us calculate first of yes dash. So first of yes dash is equal to here we have epsilon. Whereas here we have E. So first of yes dash is nothing but epsilon comma E. Now let us calculate first of E. So first of E is equal to here we have only one terminal that is B. So first the calculation is over. Next we have to calculate follow. So follow of S is equal to. So in order to calculate follow, we have to search where S is in the right hand side production. Here we have S 
as well as yes we have yes so if you take this production after yes we have yes dash so yes dash is following yes so follow of yes will become first of yes dash so what is first of yes dash here yes is nothing but uh, the starting symbol for starting symbol we have to add dollar to the follow so here the initial symbol is dollar because s is the starting symbol in the grammar next what is first of s dash epsilon comma e e comma but we should not write epsilon in follow because epsilon is not allowed in follow so we have to substitute epsilon value here so what is s dash now epsilon so if you substitute epsilon in place of s dash then the production will become i e t s i e t s so now follow of s will become so what is the next one follow of s only okay so there is no change here so dollar comma e is nothing but the result of follow of s here also if you take yes what will happen now follow of s means here there is no symbol after yes so follow of s means follow of s dash so follow of s dash is not calculated so now let us calculate follow of s dash so we have to search in the right hand side which contains s dash here we have yes dash but there is no symbol after yes dash so follow of yes dash will become follow of yes so what is follow of yes dollar comma epsilon next let us calculate follow of e so follow of e so follow of e is nothing but here we have t which is following e so follow of e will become t so this is nothing but step 3 so step 3 is also over next step 4 so here step 4 is nothing but construction of predictive parsing table so now we have to construct the parsing table so step 4 step 4 parse table construction of predictive predictive parse table so in order to construct the predictive parse table we have to take a rows and column a two dimensional array right? here what are the rows yes is the first row yes dash is the second row next uh, e is the third row so this is nothing but non terminals so non terminals are nothing but rows now let us write columns here columns are nothing but terminal symbols here the first two terminal symbol is i next one t next one g so here the first one is i next one is i is over next one t next one is a so i is over t is over capital e s s dash and nothing but upper case letters a a is also over next here we have g and b so e so this is nothing but e e next one b and we have to take dollar also there is no need to take epsilon here okay so we have to fill this table now so for that purpose we have to consider the productions here in the first production we have two alternatives so what is one a yes implies i e t yes yes dash so yes is nothing but a this one is nothing but alpha so we have to calculate first of alpha so first of alpha means i e t yes yes dash so this is nothing but it is starting with i so this is nothing but i so we have to add this production to m of m means this parsing table m of what is the non terminal s comma and terminal symbol is i so this is nothing but yes this is nothing but i so what is the production we have to add yes implies i e t yes yes dash now let us consider the second production uh, one b yes implies a so this is nothing but a this is nothing but alpha so we have to calculate first of a so what is first of a a so we have to add so this is nothing but yes what is the terminal symbol a so what is the production here yes implies a is the production so first production is over now let us consider the second production so what is the second production there here we have only one production so yes dash implies uh, here we have two alternatives so 2a yes dash implies epsilon 
If the production contains epsilon, then we have to calculate fall off A. Fall off A. So fall off S dash. So fall off S dash. So what is the result of fall off S dash? Dara comma epsilon. So here, uh, what is here? What is the non-terminal? S dash is the non-terminal. And what are the terminals it is producing? Dara E. So dara means this one. E means this one. So which production we have to add? S dash implies epsilon. S dash implies epsilon. So 2A is over. Now let us consider the next one. S dash implies ES. So we have to calculate first of ES. First of ES. So what is first of ES? E. So what is the non-terminal here? S dash. What, what is the terminal it is, it is producing? E. So S dash implies ES. So we can say that this is not LL of 1 grammar. LL of 1 grammar means each cell in the parsing table should contain only one production. So if a cell contains more than one production, then we can say that it is not an LL of 1 grammar. So this is not an LL of 1 grammar or not a predictive parser. Okay? But we have to fill the complete table. So second production is over. So what is the third one? E plus B. So we have to calculate first of B. So what is first of B? B. So E is the non terminal. B is the terminal here. What is the production here? E plus B. So we can say that this is, this is, it is not LL of 1 grammar. So here there is no need to derive any string here. Why? Because this is not LL of 1 parser or not uh, LL of 1 grammar. So this is why this is not LL of 1 grammar? Because here this cell contains two productions. But the parsing table should contain only one production. Each cell in the parsing table should contain only one production. So this is about LL of 1 grammar or uh, predictive parser or uh, non-decursive recent parser.